Está funcionando? Beleza? So, good morning and uh, welcome to the workshop on non-scientific skills uh, for scientists or for students and science. Okay? So, I, I will give two talks. Uh, the first one today is about talks and posters and seminars and how to speak to people and make yourself uh, 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 make a good impression and and uh, and communicate uh, actually efficiently with uh, with your audience. Uh, and tomorrow I will talk about money. Okay, so where the money is and how it can flow to your pocket. So uh, okay, so I started with the wrong. You should not do this. I, I started with the wrong slide. <laughs> okay, I was going to start with this slide actually, and. Uh, which is nice, yes? You have the, the, uh, the stars and a person there and so on, okay? So, first lesson. Uh, this is beautiful, but the talk is not about cosmology, astrophysics, or something that has anything to do with that. So, so maybe when you prepare your slides, you go for something which is more neutral, like this, which is has, has it's not completely... Uh, uh, red, but uh, it's it's neutral, okay? And uh, you put your affiliation. Don't forget to put your affiliation when you make the presentation and your name, okay? So, good. Let's, uh, let's see. So I will divide this into parts, on first on seminar talks, and then on posters, okay? So yeah, here are some general advices. So, the first thing is put into your mind that giving a seminar either at a workshop or a conference, a colloquium, or to your research group is not like a thesis defense. It's not like, like you are being judged by the people. And a thesis defense, the name even says you have to defend yourself. Yeah, yeah, and uh, sometimes people uh, at the committees are supposed to attack you, yeah? <laughs> but it is not the case. So don't be, don't try to, to play too safe when you give a seminar. You are you are the person that knows most about the topic. Okay, you are there to to make people learn things about your work, and not for them to question you, uh, if, to see if you are a, a good, good scientist, a good uh, student, and so on. It is not an examination. So we, we see this a lot. People that go to conferences, and then they give a seminar, okay, afraid of questions, afraid of everything. So try to change this. You are the guy that knows the things. okay. And well, and then be also sure that you talk about things you know. This seems obvious, but this is not. Why? Sometimes people start, so they have made a calculation. Say, you are theoretical physics, you have made a certain calculation. But then you want to say, oh, this is very important. Okay? So it has a relation with this area of physics that can be applied and and say you are working in field theory, but can be applied to condensed matter physics. Then somebody asks, what kind of application? And then it just turns out that you never thought really about it. You're just trying to make some advertisement of how nice your, your research is, but you, you're talking essentially bullshit, okay? It, it, you, you should not do this. Talk about what you know. So things that... And, and this will give you more self-confidence. Don't, don't, don't try to give seminars about things you don't know, or just uh, you know the, your calculation, but you want to make this in a, such a larger context that uh, it's nice to put larger context, but you have to know what you are saying. Okay? There's a lot of people when you go to conferences that 
fail at this point. Okay, so talk about what you know, then you can have, then, then you don't need to be afraid of interacting and having questions. Okay, so, and again, it's not a thesis defense. Thesis defense is an examination and you, will to, you want to play the safest way possible, okay? This is different. Com talks at conferences, at seminars, and so on. Uh, are, you are the, the star, okay? So, second. Just, oops. Just one minute. Do I have? Try to know your audience. Okay? So, because if you know your audience, you can shape your presentation accordingly. So usually, you can know your, you know your audience. If you are going to a, a very, very uh, specialized seminar, you know that the people have a certain knowledge about the area. You don't have to explain everything. If you give a talk it, for a larger conference, a larger uh, uh, audience, then you have, you will shape, you will have a different seminar. So that, that's what uh, I mean here is, if you are talking to specialists, okay, in, in, in workshop, okay, you, you can be technical. And, okay, you, you just say what you have to say, what is your work, everybody knows the basis, okay? Then you can be technical, okay? Don't, uh, don't waste your time with, with non-technical things if it is really a, a workshop. So about workshops. There, there are something, uh, events that are called workshops, and they are not actually workshops. They are more like conferences. So uh, when I say workshop, it's really specialized. Okay? If you say workshop on string theory, this is n it's actually not very much a, a, a conference, I mean, a, a workshop, because it's, it's very general. Everybody knows string theory, but there are many ramifications and so on. So workshop, what I mean is really, something specialized. Then you can be very technical, and, and that's, uh, that's actually supposed uh, to be so. So uh, now you have a wider audience, say physicist. Okay? Everybody's physicist, and but not necessarily from your specific topic. Even if maybe you have an audience of theoretical physicists, but there are people doing particle physics, there are people doing high um, uh, other things like uh, string uh, theory or cosmology or even condensed matter physics. So then you have a wider audience. Okay? You, uh, uh, you spend some time with the introduction. And the introduction so that people can understand the context. Otherwise, people. Otherwise, and this happens very frequently, you go to a conference, you go to a, a, a seminar, you sit there, you are not from the same area of the, uh, of the uh, people, that, of the person that is talking, and after two minutes, you cannot follow anymore, because you cannot even ask a question, because you don't understand anything, because the person is not presenting the thing in a way that people can understand. Sometimes you go to a seminar and the person starts with an equation. And you look at the equation, you don't know even the meaning of the variable. So don't do this kind of thing because you, are, you want to communicate and say to people with how interesting your research is. So make a longer introduction to give the context of your work. Okay? So, and then, at the extreme, uh, uh, extremely uh, 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 general public, so maybe you're invited to outreach activities or very general public, okay? 
So then, uh, don't assume uh, people know anything about that, uh, about your about your area, and you don't give technical details. Okay, putting too much technical details is uh, for people that can't understand them. Is like, I mean, like what for? I mean, people don't understand any. Yeah? You're talking to a wider audience. And you start to say, uh, talk about differential equations, and people don't know differential equations. Right? Say so you're you are supposed to give a talk at the university, but at the department of I don't know psychology or of uh, biology, whatever. Okay, so no equations. Okay, the people don't know equations. Uh, if you start with the equations, there's no point about that. You're talking to a lot of people, which are kind enough not to stand up and go uh, go away. Okay. That's the point. So try to know your audience and try to prepare your presentations according to the audience you are talking to. So every presentation has more or less this kind of structure. Okay? You have an introduction. You have the main body of results, yeah, your results, and some conclusion. Okay? This is kind of obvious. It's just kind of obvious, because you go to seminars and you see people, for instance, uh, a lot of seminars where people have no conclusions. Okay. So let's see, for the introduction. Okay. So put your work in context. As I told you, if it's very specialized, you can more or less keep this. But otherwise, you have to get your work in context. But you have also not to be too generic. Too generic is, li is like that. Um, I work with a certain equation, okay? Integrable equation. Then you start, well, this equation is very important in condensed matter physics, in plasma physics, in high energy physics, in uh, nonlinear dynamics, and, and so it's important everywhere. It's not true. Yeah? It's the typical bullshit that you read in papers that are that they are not good. Okay? So put the context, but the real context. It's not, not putting your, your work as the most important thing in all areas. You know, people know it's not true. Okay? So put the real context, okay? and, and, uh, and that's, that's OK. Don't, don't, don't try to, to, to say, uh, advertise something which is not true. Uh, so you don't, should not spend too much with the time with the introduction. Okay? So it's nice to make it. And so it depends a little bit. If it's colloquium, colloquium is wider audience. Okay. Well, then you can go a little bit longer uh, with with the with the introduction. But otherwise, as a seminar. You give an introduction, but you, you don't spend half your time with the introduction, OK? So you have to more or less find a way to, in a few words, give the context, of, uh, give the, the general ideas and so of your, in your introduction. But you should not spend too much time with that, OK? Another thing. And in introductions, you don't want technicalities. It's the introduction. The technicalities come next in the, in the, in the part where you present your results. Okay? So uh, don't, don't start with technicalities. Okay? Maybe your, your work is about a new calculational technique. Okay? But you don't start directly with, the, with, with this. You say, uh, the context is this and this. This is important for that, and, and and then you say there are different techniques and so on. And I will show my new way of calculating something, and then you go for your results. Okay. So try not to be too technical with the introduction. Okay. Then you go to your results. Okay. Well, the first thing is 
you should be very clear. Okay? So first, don't assume people know the notation of your equations without you. you okay? Don't assume this. So try to be very clear so that you, you think of yourself sitting at, at, in the audience. And, and as, a, as a physicist, you know a lot of things where you can start and understand what the person is doing. Skip in technicalities, but you can understand. Okay? So this is what should happen. Okay? So uh, uh, this is what I mean to be clear. Be clear that you think that uh, if, you, if you start with too much jargon, okay, if you want to use jargon, you can, but this, you start by explaining. This word means exactly this, right? Not too much jargon and try to be very clear. Yeah. So then there's the difficult part. This, this is the most difficult part is you want to give the details of what, of what you, you've done, of your research. You, you want to give the details. But, you know, people don't like to see too much calculations. So, for instance, say, your work involves certain calculations, solving certain equations, for instance. Okay? You know, people don't want to know if you know how to do a certain integral. Okay? People assume that you know how to calculate correctly an integral. If you're in particle physics, there's a Feynman diagram. You want, you want to show people how to calculate this. It's a waste of time. People will say this is standard. They believe in principle that you did the calculation correctly, okay? unless you get very weird results and so on. Somebody can raise a hand and say, I don't believe in this. But so uh, you have to find a good mix of being technical at this part, saying what you have done, your results. You show the plots of your results. If you have some data, you show. Uh, the calculations, if you are more in theoretical part, and so on. But you skip some details, okay, which are things that everybody knows that, uh, that can be done. Like I told you, a final diagram. Okay, there is a way to compute this, so you, you don't want to go into this. Then you have made some computational work, say. You have done calculations to... I don't know, Monte Carlo simulations, partial differential equations, or whatever. Okay? Don't write down the code. People don't want to know if you solve this with C, with Python, with Fortran, whatever. Nobody is really interested in that. People will assume that you solve correctly and that you wrote a code that actually does what you are saying it does. So no point in showing codes, okay? Or detail, uh, or too much details about, about numerical techniques. This is usually, un unless, I mean, you have some innovation in the numerical techniques, but this is usually taken for granted and nobody is really, really interested in that. And finally, no, don't forget to make clear what your contribution is. Okay? Because usually you will maybe start with the work of somebody else that gives you, that you will uh, work, I mean, that gives you the basic uh, 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 setting of your, war, uh, of your work, and then you will develop something from there, but you should make it clear what, what you did and what other people did, okay? You don't have to announce, this is what I do, okay? But you put, if it's a paper, you put your reference to a paper that you published. So it's, it's nice to, people to know what, actually, see, what is the actual contribution that you are giving. Yeah. So, and for the conclusion, the main point is there has to be a conclusion. You see seminars that end up, end, when they come to an end, when they come to an end, then you say, okay, where's the conclusion? The guy just, just finished the calculation and then, thank you. And so you have to get a conclusion. Not having a conclusion is like having a music that 
like it's like la la la. Okay, so a bit like la la la. la. Okay, so you have to have some conclusion. Okay? And, and, and sometimes it's difficult to, uh, to formulate a good conclusion and so on, but it's also an exercise for you to know, for, for being, trying to be clear about that. Uh, and a conclusion is not just uh, a review of what you have done. There are many papers then, um, that, that have conclusion. It's five lines. We have done. In, in the first section of this paper, we have done the introduction. In the second, we showed this. In the third one, this other thing. In the fourth, we did the numerical calculations and so on. Okay, people already know that. They are coming to the conclusion. What, why are you repeating this? Okay, so you have to give a conclusion that, yeah, this work, uh, uh, this result shows that, for instance, that some uh, experiment should be done in this and this direction and so on. Yeah, so it's not just repeating what you did. It's trying to give an opening to, to how this connects and how this may influence other works. Okay? And this comes uh, exactly with, uh, with also mentioning some perspective future work. Okay? So this is, comes also in the conclusion. Okay? So say I, I made... Uh, here I solve the problem for a particular case, and you are now working in a general case. So that, that's a way of saying, okay, there's more things to do. Otherwise, it will look like your problem is a dead end. You made the calculation, now I will change of area because there's nothing to get anymore. There's no, no, no good things to dig out of this. Okay, so uh, so try to make some perspective uh, uh, comments and so on. Um, and obviously, I also say that why the results are important okay? and, and new. Right? So that's, that's for the conclusion. Okay? So, but the main, main take home message is you have to have a conclusion. Okay? A lot of people don't have conclusions in, in the talks or in the presentations or whatever. So now, how do you deliver your talk? Okay? So there are two main ways. It's on the blackboard, a chalk talk, okay? or with slides. Okay? So if you are in the beginning of your career, it is better to use slides. Okay? Chalk talks are used in, in, in usually in mathematical context. Okay? People start, let's consider this and this and this. And Put everything on your on the blackboard, which can be nice, okay? But it, the talk has to be long enough because this takes time. It's typically a uh, one-hour talk, then it's almost a lesson. So you can do this on the on the blackboard. You have to be very organized, so you, you, it's not time for improvisation on the blackboard. I mean, you, you have to think. So, Maybe in your mind or otherwise in your notebook, what you want to say and so on, and have an organized uh, structure of, in the blackboard. Okay? So, and you need a large one. Okay, so if you are planning to give a chalk talk, please ask: uh, Do you have a large one? Because otherwise, say you have only this, okay? this one, this part. You will start here, then here, and then you have to erase here, and so on. It will be a mess. It's horrible. Okay? So, so you better, your better option is to, uh, to slide talks, and, and this is absolutely mandatory if you have real world data and you want to show the data, you want to show maybe the the comparison of theory with data, and this comes in plots, okay, figures. And well, there's no way putting figures on the, uh, with chalk, so then you use the slides. So I will now talk mainly about the usual seminars given with with uh, with the projection. So, okay. First thing which is very important is you should not 
put too much information on a slide. So look at that, this slide here, okay? It has, a, has no, there's everything wrong here, okay? It has no contrast between the text and, and there is a contrast, contact, contrast, but it's not good enough. If the projector is not good, people won't even read it. This is too small, a lot of text, too small, nobody can actually read this. If, if all these points are really important for your presentation, then you should make a, a slide for every one of those to, uh, points, okay? And here you have a lot, lots of figures. Some are maybe on the illustrations and some are results. You should not mix it, this, this kind of thing, okay? So you have to have a, a visual organization that makes clear what you are want to say. You should also avoid too much text, longer paragraphs of text, okay? This is usually people will have to read it, okay? So they don't pay attention to you, which is bad, or they pay attention to you and they don't read it. So why is it, why is it there, okay? So there's no, no real uh, reason to have this kind of, this amount of text on a, on a slide. Second point about delivering time management. So organizers will let you know how much time you have. They will tell you you have 15 minutes plus five for, for questions. You have 40 minutes, you have one hour, whatever. They will give you an idea if they don't because sometimes the organizers themselves are not, maybe they are also new to organizations, so you ask, okay? And you stick to your time. Then you stick really to your time. If you give, they give you 15 minutes, you talk 15 minutes. And then you say, okay, 15 minutes plus five for, for questions. Then you, then you some, some people say, okay, I have 20. So, and I, I go on until the 20, okay? At this point, the, 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 the chairperson raises and makes some, uh, and some you, know, you have to stop and so on, and there's no time for questions. This is a mess. It, 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 you want the questions, okay? You want people to comment on this. They want to, to interact with them. So leave time for the questions, yeah? Okay? Well, for longer talks, like more than 30 minutes, so, so a five minute extension, okay, exceeding by five minutes is not a problem. But if you are given 30 minutes, you don't talk 50 minutes. Everybody will be upset, okay? So you have to think about this, okay? You try to, to put it there, okay? And then there is this particular thing is, uh, say it's a colloquium here at IFT, and the guy is already one hour long, and then you say, there's a chair person there, and he says, can I have more 10 minutes, okay? Most of the time, the person will say, yes, go on, okay? He's just being kind with you. He doesn't want to embarrass you, okay? No, you now sit down and it's over, okay? <laughs> People don't do this usually, okay? So they are just being kind, but they are upset with you, okay? <laughs> don't ask for this kind of thing, okay? And if you're in a conference, and this is very important, it's like, Say you're on a big conference and you give seminars, but there are parallel sessions, okay? You have to be on time because people want, maybe want to switch from one session to the other one. And if you go on and, and mess up the schedule, you're messing up the schedule of a lot of people, okay? So in, in, if you have parallel, uh, parallel sessions, you really, really, it, it's important that you keep uh, to your time, okay? So, and finally, some general advisors. So, you talk to the audience, not to the blackboard on the wall, okay? You don't give seminars like that. Pa, 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 pa. I know, you have probably had a lot of, of, of teachers and professors that just give lectures like that, 
but this doesn't mean it is good. Okay, so you try to to make some kind of contact with your audience. Okay, if, if are people uh, uh, following you and so on, so you not just like even uh, if it's like that. If I stay all the time, my whole 50 minutes here, speaking like that, that yeah, I mean, it's, it's not nice, okay? It means you're saying a little bit also, I don't, I don't care about my audience, okay? It's not very kind. Uh, so, the seminar presentation is the art of being concise. So, you have done so, many, so much work. Maybe you're giving a seminar in 20 minutes about the results of your PhD thesis, which has five sections and give you five papers. Well, you will have to find a way to be concise, okay? There are many interesting things that will be out of your talk, okay? You, you will, you have, you like so much that calculation, but I mean, this will take you five minutes and this is too much and so on. It, Put it aside, okay? So it's it's always like a, a little bit like this. I, I would like to talk more and so on, but okay, you have to be concise. Yeah. And don't don't rush through the the, the I mean it, it mean concise means that if you have 15 minutes, you have 10 or 15 uh, slides. If you have 30 slides, you will have to rush through the uh, everything. So nobody will follow anything. Okay? Nobody will understand. Again, not too much. Explicit calculations, okay? People believe you, okay? About about the the, the numerics or, or or the integrals and so on. No, nobody's interested. Um, and then don't just read the slides. Okay? There are people that go, put a lot of text, like in the in the in the bad presentation I give as an example, a lot of text, and then they stand there and read the text for the people. Okay, okay. If the text is there, and you want people to read, why are you reading for them, okay? So don't, don't, uh, don't do this, okay? You, you, what you talk is beyond what is it's on the slides. Okay? And then, this is an advice for the younger people. I mean, don't lose your temper, don't lose your mind if somebody's aggressive, okay? Don't be like our president last night. Okay, yeah, he just lost lost his temper. Yeah, his president. But so uh, sometimes it happens that that there is somebody which is aggressive. But just one point: it's different of being of asking questions and trying to, I mean, maybe disagree with you. This is not being aggressive. This is fair play. Okay, you have to answer and so on. Okay, sometimes there are people that are difficult. Okay, a lot of lot of questions and why is this? Why is I don't understand? This is in contradiction with the, what I know. This is okay. This is not aggressive. Okay, but sometimes there are people that just stand and just say, "Oh, this is all bullshit." I have a friend that has done this calculation ten years ago. Okay, this is aggressive. Okay, so don't lose your temper. You say something like. Oh, Okay, maybe you can show me this work later. Okay, if the person insists, it is usually the case that the chairperson should intervene. Okay, just saying, okay, let let the seminar go on, and you can talk after the seminar. Yeah? That's why they are chairpersons. Okay, and they are not just to say, okay, this is Professor Krenkel and so on. They are also there. If if you have a seminar, if you have a something which is 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 aggressive, or you have a fight, or whatever. So the chairperson is uh, is is supposed to to control this kind of situation. <clears throat> so let's go to the second part: or posters. Yeah. The first thing I have to tell you is that. Uh, if you are given, uh, you can choose between post and oral communications. Oral communications is better. You interact more, people pay attention, and so on. So if you have the option, go for the oral communication. It's, it delivers much more 
than the posters. Okay? So if you have the, the possibility to give the talk, it's better. Okay? So this is like poster sessions and big conferences look like. Okay? There are hundreds of posters. Okay? And this one is still not, uh, uh, not really overcrowded. Okay? Uh, there's space between this, but it can be much worse. It can be really crowded, okay? People, a lot of people here and so on. So if you are attending, the person that is attending the, the poster session will not pay attention to everything. It's not possible, okay? Because it's too much posters, too much people, too much noise and so on. People would get distracted, just go on and so on. So you have to catch the attention of the public, of the audience, of the people out there. Somehow your poster should catch the attention. Once the, once the person goes there and finds it interesting, then you talk to the person. And that's what posters are all about. Okay? They are just there for attracting people to see your, how interesting your work is and then to talk to you and have a discussion. That, that's the, when things go OK, that's the way it should, should work. But most of the time, you stand there, uh, uh, and your poster here, and nobody stops. So you should try to use your poster as a way of calling attention to your work. So I will go through some posters and, and, and analyze them uh, quickly. Too much text, okay? This is, the person almost wrote a whole paper on the poster, okay? So this is too much press. So, uh, so no abstract. I mean, you know, abstract is, is, is something you put on, on your paper. You wouldn't be an abstract. The person is already there trying to read the, the thing. So why is there an abstract, okay? And then here, small letters, a lot of text, and so on. OK, then a lot of errors like caption are not aligned. And then, you see, you cannot even read the references, OK? It's too much, OK? Just too much, OK? Too much figures, everything. So this is the kind of post that nobody will stop, because even the title is not clear. It's an enormous title. Oh, I, I took out an example, which is not from physics, but anyhow. It's enormous, okay? So people won't, won't really like this, okay? So this is better, but not okay. So what this person tried is to have here uh, a part which summarized in one sentence the main result. But then the person goes on and, and uh, goes on with a lot of text. Okay, and the references completely impossible to read. Okay, why are there if you cannot read them? Okay, and you should put things that people have will read, and then your results, which are probably here, this kind of thing, the real data here, and so on, is the smallest part of your of your of your poster, I and mean, it's supposed to be the largest one. Okay, what you have done, so. Uh, this part, this, this part here is OK, but this part is not OK. So this is better because it already had some, some uh, way to put more clearly the title. Okay. It has kind of abstract. So again, why do you have an abstract? Okay. You don't need an abstract, but you need you, you, you need to call something. This person could have used this to summarize, so uh, which is not an, uh, the usual abstract. Uh, just summarize your result. Okay. Uh, but then, well, this part is it's a little bit too, too much text, but it's at least more separated. You can read the references and. The results are not, uh, they are clearly displayed and so on. So it is not attractive, but uh, okay, it's not on the, on the worst of them. Yeah. 
So this one is okay. Okay. So as I told you, presentations, posters included, is the art of being concise. Okay. So this person separated the the chapters or the, the parts. Okay. And uh, put a title uh, which is concise and uh, and gives a clear uh, a clear uh, notion of uh, what has been done, okay? key learning point and so on, and no technicalities and so on. So this one, I would say, it's it's okay. Okay, it's a good poster and. Uh, Sometimes you're going to say, okay, I have a lot of equations. My, my, my work is equations, okay? Well, then you have to put equations, but well, also try to display them in such a way that they are clearly displayed and that people don't have to you go there and say, let's see what the, yeah, okay. you, know, you need to find a way to, to make this clear, okay? Uh, this one is also good, okay? So this person... Uh, used a very large uh, area of the poster just to deliver the main message. And then it talks about the work and so on, and uh, here's some plots, and then it's clearly displayed, the affiliation is displayed, and so on, so on. This is, this is I would say, okay. And this one is really good, okay? This person has a clear message has the main result here in the middle, and then gives some details here and here. Okay? Well, she also put some, some way to take a picture of this, which will lead you to, in, the, in her case, it's a, it's a blog. It could lead you to the page of the, of the, of where the paper is published, and so on. Okay? Uh, so this is nice, because it has actually the results clearly displayed and and the the message and then here there are some details about methods and so on so and then there are people that promote this people that uh, okay this would be also one one kind of template okay so introduction design data and so on put some figures it's not mandatory to put figures, anyhow. Okay, uh, not too much colors. Okay, make contrast. You never know the quality of the projectors, so use contrasting colors. Okay. So, take-home message. Okay. So I, I went back to this nice photo. Okay, which I should not because it's, it's, it's out of topic. But as the topic is, is, is very general, I have some poetic uh, uh, license to put it here. So be concise, okay? That's an exercise for everybody. You have to be concise. You don't talk too much. You don't write too much on your poster, okay? And besides, I, uh, one comment about the posters also. The poster is there to attract people to talk with you. It's not, the poster is not a paper, okay? Yeah, you don't have to put all the results. You put, have to be clear, and then people talk to you. Okay, that, that's the, the how poster works. Okay, know your audience. Okay, take care about the length of the uh, of your of your presentation. This is an English uh, title. Uh, not too too small details is too small details is nice to discuss after your talk or, after, or during the poster session, then you can discuss details. People come to talk to you and you say, oh, I made this calculation in this way and so on. This is okay, okay? But in the presentation, not too much details. And, uh, and display the information as clearly as possible for you, okay? So that's it, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Roberto. Um, if anyone has a question or a comment about it. I won't leave without a lot of questions. So you put questions. You ask questions. If you want to ask in Portuguese, it's OK. Because if your problem is you are shy and speak in English, uh, you ask in Portuguese. Right? Yeah, there's a question. Uh, 
Ah, yeah, this was. So I think in portrait, if you have to put it like this, it's harder to put a larger figure at I don't know if I have an idea. Yeah, you mean, yeah, that, that's true, actually, yeah. So usually landscape is better for presentation, but sometimes there's a restriction. And uh, so let's say you have something this. Well, you can kind of put the title here, then main message here, and then divide this in two parts, maybe. Okay. But the idea is that you have a title that is uh, it, that is, is concise, that says what is interesting. Then you put some some figure that expresses your work. And if it's not a figure, if it's an equation, you put something here, but showing uh, what has been done, but it has to be large enough, otherwise people just, you know, right? okay? And then some conclusions. And so more, more questions. So. Would you have any t specific tips for giving presentations for postdoc interviews? For what? Postdoc interviews. Ah, okay. Postdoc interviews. Yeah, that that is like a thesis. <laughs> but no, 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 not really, because uh, so postdoc interviews. That that's that's three. First of all, just interviews that are on 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 the blackboard. Okay, here at IFT they have this. Okay. So you give two seminars for, I mean, to be hired, okay? But it's similar to postdocs, okay? You, you, you go on a blackboard and you explain, and the other one you give a more general one, okay? But uh, so when you have a postdoc um, interview, first one, that's the most difficult part is to try to be calm and uh, not be afraid. And uh, again, talk only about what you know. Because in postdoc interviews, they, there is probably a committee, a hiring committee or something, somebody that decides something. And they may want to know more. Okay? So they will, they will go on and, and, and um, put some pressure on you okay, to see what you know, okay? So this is a kind of examination, okay? So you have to know that, so talk about what you know because then people will actually ask something that you know the answers, okay? Don't try to, this generic everything, I do everything, so then, then it's, it's very bad, okay? Um, then usually you will talk about your PhD uh, work, so Try to show how interesting it is and how it relates to the work of the group where you are applying for a postdoc. Right? Sometimes you want just to change your subject. So you worked on, I don't know, condensed matter physics and you have, want to be a postdoc in something else, in experimental physics. Then you, you need to have an explanation. Why? Why are you the person to be hired even if you have not worked on the same subject as the group. So I would say this. And then all these kind of things, yeah, like uh, don't, don't uh, uh, take care of the time, which is usual, but it becomes more important in the, in the postdoc interview. Um, we might have time for one. Hi, uh, when we are presenting a poster and we don't have any result, like for example, we are, we are just presenting our current work, so we don't have any result, any conclusion. So what should we focus mostly on? What you want to do, okay? What we, I mean, you have, you see, kind of typical student poster, okay? You're a student, you are studying something, but you don't have the results, okay? Well, first, of, well, Say what is your, I mean, a, a, a title will also say what is your subject, okay? This you know, okay? So you don't have maybe conclusions, but instead of the conclusions, you put a kind of research program. I will go on 
and try to calculate this and this and that. So instead of conclusions, perspective ideas and what you will do and so on and so on. But you have already done some part, but you still not uh, finished the work. But you can do uh, is, is to explain where you are going. Okay, that's that is the best thing. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, if not, uh, we can thank uh, Roberto again. <laughs> and then we have like a 15 minute break before the next uh, talk. Oh yes, and uh, the break, uh, the coffee break is up, uh, upstairs here, so you can have some coffee and some snacks.